So this is my agenda. So don't be mistaken. I really want to make sure that we remove those bad guys and they don't contest elections next year. This is my object. And this doesn't mean only uh, those in opposition. Even Mr. Even uh, uh, Dr. Edgar Chakwalung, if there is the evidence that he, he too is dented, I don't want him on the ballot. It will even be nicer not to have him. So this is the object. This is the object and this is where I stand even as a party. Our party, we want to make sure that we fight corruption. Look, Zambians. There is no way we are going to have progressive and meaningful change if we, are, if we will keep on having bad leadership, if we keep on having people who are corrupt. I know a lot of you are frustrated with the President Edgar Lungu and, uh, and his government. But, and you want change. But that change shouldn't be to bring in wrong people again. How are we going to have change? We keep on repeating the same people. Today is in the ruling party. You are saying he's corrupt and so on and so forth. The following day, he jumps out of the ruling party. He's attacking the ruling party. You say he's a good leader. How? How? These are the same people. Some of you in here. When I started the issue of Bakamwili, right in this of in, in this uh, boardroom, some of you were saying, "No, what, what, Bakamwili, what?" But you are forgetting that Bakamwili was in the ruling party, and the cases that I brought, that I took to court, were not when Bakamwili was in opposition. It was when Bakamwili was in the ruling party, and today Bakamwili is a convict, and yet you are saying, "No, this is." The Messiah. How? How? We want to. How are we going to change this country if we are going to have this mentality? Some of you say, no, you favor Edgar Lungu. Believe you me. Believe you me. I, I am telling you, I swear upon my living God. If Edgar Lungu, if you have evidence against Edgar Lungu, I will come and sit on this chair in this office and say it as it is. I will not, I will not spare him. I will not let my conscience be betrayed just because he's in office, if indeed there is corruption. The problem that we have is that we usually run with, you know, innuendos, speculations. That's what we run with. If there is evidence, if there is evidence, of President Ed Galungu being involved in wrong things, for me, I will definitely go for him. At the moment, I don't have tangible evidence to say President Ed Galungu uh, is corrupt. I don't have it. And I'm saying, if you have something, please bring it. But it has to be good evidence, like the evidence I have here. It has to be good evidence. Because at the end of the day, like HH was saying, I mean, if you say something that you cannot substantiate, you are in trouble. I don't want to be in trouble. I don't want to be in trouble. Yes, I have issues with President Ed Galungu in terms of fighting corruption. He approaches corruption with key blows. And I, I have a problem there. I have a problem there. There are a number of ministers that I'll tell you, and these are in, are in, are in PF ministers today. Because you like to say, no, you only attack the opposition. But some of the names I've mentioned before, they are in government. They are ministers. And I've had issues with them. And my writing <coughs> is on, on social media. That's why I write on social media, because I want, even when I'm long gone, people will be able to go to, to my page and say, this is what he said. So for me, I am very balanced in approaching corruption issues. When I'm talking about Mr. Aka in the HLMA, it is out of the evidence that I have. As far as I'm concerned, Mr. Aka in the HLMA should not, and I repeat, should not be aspiring for presidency. I think he should be in jail. And why do I say that? I say this 
out of the evidence that I have. Because I've come to, I've come, I've met people, I've spoken to people, alive, flesh and blood people, not at ghosts. They have come to complain. How Mr. Aka in the got them out of their houses? How Mr. Aka in the kicked them out of their employments? How Mr. Aka in the has not paid them? As people who used to work here for some of the companies that were privatized. At the moment, I can give you one example because I want to, I'm, I'm saying I want to talk with evidence. I'll give you one example. I've got a number of cases that I've been looking at. But today I'm just going to give you some of the issues, issues that I'm going to the Anti-Corruption Commission, to the police, and make sure that uh, Mr. Akainde Chilema is prosecuted. In my course of going around checking for this evidence, it has come to my attention that Mr. Akainde Chilema has two analyses. This is what I've obtained, and I'm giving it to the police to investigate. There is a, an analysis and a take note of the NRC. I want to mention to, to mention these analysis. The NRC, there is one which is 26, 17, 86, stroke 72, 1. And another one, 12, 88, 73, stroke 72, stroke 1. These NRCs are all pointing to Mr. Haka in the HLM. I am a whistleblower in this instance, and I want the police to investigate. I want the police to investigate. Me, in my investigations, as I was going around looking for this, looking for that, going to the Ministry of Lands, going to, um, you know, um, a, a Zambia Development Agency and other, I've come out that there are these two institutions, and I'm confused. I'm confused. Go to Unza, the names are also not appearing. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm wondering who is Mr. Aka in the Ichilema? I am lost on his identity. Unza, if you go there, you will see different names. From the names that we know him in the political circles. NRCs, I'm seeing two NRCs. Two NRCs, and some of these, and um, both NRCs are attached to some properties. This is how I came to find out. Because you, you, you do a search, Haka in the I had so many names attached to certain properties, but the NRCs are, are different. So I'm confused. What's going on? Which is, what, who, is we, who is who here? Who is Mr. Haka in the And for me, this is a point of investigation. I want the police to investigate on the identity of Mr. Haka in the to my fellow Zambians, just on that issue of identity, I don't know. I don't know what you think. But if you have a person that cannot clearly identify himself, how can you trust such a person? Just there, if you have a person that cannot clearly identify himself, what are we talking about? He was Haka in the Sami Hichirema at Unza. When did he drop the Sami name? What is going on? What about these two NRCs I'm finding out? What's going on? I am taking this to the police and I believe I am not mad. I am not foolish. This is a very genuine case, Mr. Aka Inde wants to occupy that big position to be citizen number one. Now, if you want to be citizen number one and we cannot identify you, how can that be? I don't hate Mr. Aka in the HDM. These are facts. These are facts. I've given you the NRC numbers. Go and check them. You will find that they have got the same name. Same. I mean, everything is pointing to Mr. Aka in the What's going on? I want to know. Go to Unza. You'll find that, I mean, if you check his computer number, the names are different. Anyway, moving on. Let me come to privatization. I have said that. There are people, there are people who were deprived of their properties, who have not been paid, who were kicked out of employment in the name of privatization. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not joking. 
I am not being malicious. I have spoken to these people. I have seen how they are suffering. Some of them, if you see them, you would actually feel pity. There is one house. There is one house. There is one house, plot number. You take note of this. There is one house, plot number 77, stroke A, stroke 609, on Pola Avenue in Cheston, Lusaka. This house used to belong to Zimco. It used to belong to, Zim to, to Zimco. And the occupant of that house, the tenant, the sitting tenant, at the time they were privatizing uh, Zimco, was Mr. S. Jerry. This is Mr. S. Jerry. And uh, uh, just before I go on, I want to show you. I've got a list. This is a list of, um, of, of, of houses which were sold by Zimco. I will distribute, I will distribute this, um, uh, this, uh, this document. I will distribute this document. Here there are names, not just for the person that I'm talking about, but all the names, all the, the houses which were sold. Okay? And this particular person I'm talking about is actually on page 2, number 58. Number 58. You will see the, the, the house number that I've mentioned here, 77, stroke A, stroke 6, 0. Uh, Paula Avenue, Cheston. And it was offered to Mr. S. J. as a sitting tenant, as a former worker of Zimco. At, um, so this, I'll put it there. This is out. You will look through it. It's true. And the, for those people, I want to also to make an appeal that for those who are on this, who are on this list, this list, I will post it even on my page. I know there are some people who were treated in the same way, like Mr. S. Jerry. I want them to come forward because they are my witnesses. They are my witnesses. So all those who are on this list, if you were deprived in the same way that Mr. S. Jerry was deprived his house, I want you to come forward. And accompany you because I'm saying you, it was offered to Mr. S. Jerry. You might think that I'm joking. Here is an offer letter. This is an offer letter to Mr. S. Jerry. This one. It's an offer letter. And the name is there on the list, together with, uh, among, together with others. You know? Yeah, it's, written, it's actually M. M. Jerry. Plot number whatever, Polar Avenue, whatever, whatever, dear, whatever, whatever, and you see it. And it was offered to this man to be bought at 19.8 million. 19.8 million, that is what was offered to him. By that time, it was uh, uh, not best. Okay? So, 9.8 million. Mr. S. Jerry was, Mr. M. J. was given that, uh, that, uh, that, that offer and that later. And he actually paid for it. And I have a receipt. He actually paid for it. He actually paid for it. He paid it through uh, SP Mulenga. SP Mulenga were the lawyers who were appointed by, uh, you know, as uh, to be receiving money and so on and so forth. So he paid through uh, SP Mulenga. Now, what happened thereafter? Mysteriously, mysteriously, that house was bought by Mr. Alka in the HLM at 31,000. Now, how did it happen? Here is a printout from the Ministry of Lands. Here is a printout. On page two of this, on the second page, you will see Mr. Alka in the HLM there and the change of title, you know, certificate being offered. And at 31,000, how did Mr. Ishirema buy this house? How? Mr. Ishirema never worked for Zimco. He never worked for Zimco. 
and we have an offer letter to the sitting tenant and we have a receipt of this sitting tenant buying the house, paying for the house. Later on, we have a house in the name of Mr. Ichirema buying it at 31000 I have checked and I have been told, I have found out that he, Mr. Norman Mbazima, Mr. Norman Mbazima, who was the core liquidator, offered the house to Mr. Aga in the HM. Offered the house to Mr. Aga in the HM and he bought it at 31000 Depriving, depriving the sitting tenant, the former worker of Zimco. How did Mr. Norman Mbazima offer the house to Mr. Aka in Nigeria? If you check around, you find that Norman Mbazima and HH, they are very close people. They are very close people. Mr. Norman Mbazima, from there, he even ended up being the deputy chairman of Anglo American. Anglo American. And Anglo American is believed to be one of the strongest sponsors of Mr. Ichirema and the UPND. So you see the connection. You see the connection. If these are not fiction. These are real things. Here are the, here are the facts. Here is a printout. Mr. Ichirema is there having had bought this house at 31,000. This is what he's showing. And I'm wondering how come how come? And these, these people who are being deprived is not the only one. I know there are other people. There is one person, Mr. Norman, who, who I'm sure, wherever he is, he will remember that there is one person in Kwacha Road who also wanted to be treated the same way. He had to go to Ronald Penza by then because he was like him, he was connected to Ronald Penza. So he went to Ronald Penza and Ronald Penza wrote a letter, a letter which I have telling Norman Mbazima to say, no, don't do that. He's the owner of the house. Give him the house. And that's how he was saved. Otherwise, his house would have also been gone. Now, Zambian, honestly, is this kind of things that we are going to allow just because we are frustrated, we say, no, this is our Messiah, with this kind of background? I am bringing out this, and I'm taking it to the Anti-Corruption Commission. I want the Anti-Corruption Commission to look into this because how did it happen that Mr. Hichirema, who was never a worker for Zamzu or Zimco, who was not a sitting tenant in that house, ended up buying a house, depriving, depriving this man. I want the Anti-Corruption Commission to investigate this. This is one of the cases that I'm taking to the Anti-Corruption Commission. These, these printouts were taken some time back. But just the other day when I went to the Ministry of Land to check on this house to get a printout, there are dubious entries. There are dubious entries on that. If you go and get a printout today, what you see, it's not making sense. So I am issuing a serious warning to those people who work at the Ministry of Lands. Because there is also too much corruption there. There is too much corruption at the Ministry of, Land, of Lands. A lot of people are mysteriously losing properties. From nowhere, Walikala, with your title, all of a sudden there is another person with another, with another title on your property. How? How is this happening? And this is a clear example that I have. Because a printout, that is a printout from the Ministry of Lands. That's a printout which was done some time back. I go there just the other day, the printout is showing something else. How? This is the same ministry. And some details are just, I mean, you would think that it's a different house. You know, when I went there, I'm like, is this the same house? I went to my source. I said, no, I think you gave me a wrong whatever. And he said, no, it's a real one. It's the same. Same property. There is a lot of corruption going on at the Ministry of Land and myself, we want to make sure that such corruption is gotten rid of. When you have a title, 
it's, you're supposed to feel secure. You're supposed to be okay to say, I have a property. We shouldn't have a situation where people with the influence, people with money, taking advantage and just grabbing properties from citizens. I can't allow that. That's not why I'm in politics. I'm here in politics to finish this kind of nonsense. To finish this kind of nonsense. Anyway, that is one, one house. Now, from Mako, I'm moving. By the way, Fidel Mufuka, the panda says, Munanj, put him one in Kazek, see, Mgapan, Gatapari, Mufu, Mamana, that pangre says, Atapoa, but I have a document, Opoia, Malapita Mueka. I will even post them on social media. Eh? I will even post them on social media. Let me move to another property. There is another property. There is another property. Farm number, farm number 1924. Farm number 1924, which is in Kalomo, Southern Province. This property belongs to the late Samson Siatemo. This property, farm number 1924, belongs to the late Samson Siatemo, and it is in Kalomo. What is the issue on this property? This property was mortgaged to Lima Bank. It was mortgaged to Lima Bank around the 19, uh, 1989. It was on mortgage to Lima Bank. When Lima Bank was being liquidated, and you remember who were the liquidators, it was Grand Thunder. It was Grand Thunder. So when Lima Bank was being privatized, this property was still, was still under mortgage under Lima Bank. Today, as we speak, this property is owned by Mr. Haka in the Ichidem. I want to show you this is the mortgage. Because in Sri Lanka, there are evidence that we have to go to the corridors of the court. On the corridors of the court. If we turn the number evidence, he, he, mortgage. This is the mortgage. It was under Lima Bank. Now we want to say Samson Tembo and Lima Bank Limited. 1989. Lima Bank goes into, into privatization. Afterwards, in 19. So there we have the evidence is there. Afterwards, in. Um, in uh, um, uh, 19, in 2004, 2004, this property, this property changed into Mr. Haka in the Hichirema. And even today, as I speak, it is still in Mr. Haka in the Hichirema's name. If you check, I checked on some of the comments as far as I go, to check if Mr. Haka in the Hichirema declared interest. There is nothing. There is nothing. And this time around, when Mr. Haka in the HDM was changing the name, the property, conveying this property into his name, he was actually the managing partner of Grand Thornton. How did Mr. Haka in the HDM, how did he acquire this property when he was a liquidator? I'm not giving the details, I have all the details. But I want him to respond. Because he's saying, no, I never took advantage. I want him to respond. You are right. I am asking. If farm number number in Kalomo, how did you acquire it when it was mortgaged to Lima Bank? Lima Bank, which you were privatizing, which you are liquidating, which you are liquidating. Nganaranda kwevati yo, eche chua limupata. How? These are clear facts. I don't hate Mr. Haka in the Chilema. It's not personal. It's not personal. Tatoa pitsira kumoyina ilo ku Ethiopia, bena ba ile I don't know. Eh? So, there is nothing like a hatred here. It's facts speaking for themselves. Even if we go to court, even if Jack Wimbo 
is the judge. What are they going to do with this? How are they going to exonerate? I want to see Madame Aloya back. Keep Mwemba. I want to see them. I want them. I want them to see. I want to see how they are going to exonerate Mr. Aka in the Ichirim of this. I want them to. I want to see. And I'm telling you some of these things. Even if you have can, an emotional attachment to a person, facts speak for themselves. Like they did Muniba Kamui. He can say whatever he wants, accuse a judge, uh, the magistrate, and anything. But at the end of the day, facts speak for themselves. Eh? There is a maxim, uh, whatever, whatever. But let me not go there. But facts speak for themselves. And here, facts are speaking for themselves. Facts are speaking for themselves. There is a. Now, I'm giving you this is the document which shows now that Mr. Ichirema is the owner. That is the transfer. I'm putting it there. Mm. I know there are friends of the uh, HH has got also some friends in the media. Please get this and take it. <laughs> I mean, it's a fact. Yeah? It's a fact. Take this to him and let him start organizing his defense. Because the Anti-Corruption Commission, they need to act on this. They need to act on this. And I want, I want to see it, I want to see the logical conclusion of these matters. These matters are very serious. I want to be seen like in their power and our work. I will leave it for now, but I will present it before the Anti-Corruption Commission. So I'm there by a church when you are going, when you are summoned, because they have to summon you. Otherwise, I'm going to place a, a, a mandamus on the Anti-Corruption Commission. If the Anti-Corruption Commission, they don't act on this one, I'm going to place a, a, a mandamus on them so that they can make sure they call. A, 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 what no, is the largest opposition leader, no, whatever, whatever. Uh -uh. A crime is a crime. A crime is a crime. Corruption is corruption. It doesn't matter who commits it. No matter how big you are, no matter how popular you are, no matter how much money you have, we have got only one law. And me, I operate on the fact that we are all equal before the law. We are all equal before the law. So, I'm not our church. Don't you come on, if I'm a church The fact is, we are all equal before the law. But GBM, but you know, we. But we are all equal before the law. So HH, if HH has committed crimes, me, I don't want to hear the issue to say, no, no, he's the biggest opposition, we can't touch him. Poor people are being arrested for stealing chicken. In Salamu, he doesn't pick a chicken from the neighbors. He's arrested and he's sent to jail. Why do you want to make excuses for the rich people? Why do you want to make excuses for Kamui? Your heart is whatever, whatever. Even how many people are being jailed every day? Why should I have a heart for Kamui? Why? We are all equal before the law. And especially if you are, if you are in leadership, you are even supposed to be more responsible than the ordinary citizens. So if anything, the citizens should be more, should demand more responsibility on the leaders than on the poor. But we are fond of excusing the rich and the busy uh, pointing fingers at, the, at each other, condemning each other, judging each other. No. HH must go to, must go to court and let the, the court judge him. Let the court judge him. I'm not, I'm, I want to make sure, I want HH. So, you, those who like to insult, those who like to say whatever it is, now I'm Tuma, I don't care. You can call me whatever you want, you can say whatever you want, it's okay. It's okay. What I want is to make sure that only the right people, only good people are on the ballot. I don't care that So I think I'm wrong for it. I don't care. That's just what it is.
I've also taken interest in the Sun Hotel. I have also looked at it. Then ever last week I was busy when I couldn't fly to Ethiopia. The same money because I wanted to go to Ethiopia. Because of the war, I couldn't go. So that money, I wanted to use it to go to Mauritius. <coughs> to go and check on Mosotunia because Mosotunia it is saying that the owners of that hotel are in Mauritius because from where, I, from where I stand I think that that company is just a fictitious company that, that Mosotunia is, belongs to HH and is hiding through these companies which are created in safe havens Unfortunately, I couldn't go because when I tried to check on the flights and everything, it's difficult to fly into uh, Mauritius because of COVID. But I'm still looking around. I want to make sure that I go and get one piece of evidence out there so that it also becomes part of the indictments of Mr. Aka in the Ichirim. It's the evidence that I'm looking at. And even yourselves, if you are objective, you will see that indeed there is something wrong here. I'm sure you would also want to know about these two NRCs. I'm sure you want to know. Who do they belong to? What's going on? I'm sure you want to know how come he changed his names. I'm sure you want to know. I'm sure you would also not want to be deprived of a house like Mr. M. Jerry. I'm sure you wouldn't want that. These people are suffering. What about this farm? How is it that Mr. Ichirema is owning this farm? Which was under Lima Bank, which was privatizing, how? I'm sure these are genuine questions that we should ask Mr. Ichirema. In all fairness, we should ask him. And if he can even be cleared by the, by the courts, even better, even better. So me, Mr. Ichirema, you should actually thank me, you should be happy with me that I'm taking him to court. Because if he's innocent, the courts will, will exonerate him. He shouldn't even be threatening me. Why is he threatening me? Stop threatening me, Mamdala. Take me as somebody who is helping you to clean you. To clean you, if you are indeed clean. But if you are dirty, you don't belong in politics. You belong to jail. That's what it is. That's what it is. That company, Sun Hotel, we need to be clear what's going on there. We need to be clear. Mr. Aka in the Ichirema, Bafuire Ba Samba, Mumenshi, Aya Kwebat, Yadiaya Achari, the Holy Spirit, if we have a Sampia before he comes to do politics. At the moment, in my opinion, the man, no, no, Shara Neni Chapantu, I would have used the, my whatever, but you know, I know. I, uh, I want to respect, I want to be media friendly. But surely the man is not clean. As far as I'm concerned, he's not clean. And I'm not going to sit back. So please, I'm insisting, Zambians, we don't come and start saying, no, this is a ploy for H not to stand. What, what? Edgar Lungu. Edgar Lungu is just a suspect as in my eyes. If I catch him, if I can catch Vayad Galungu on something, I will even be happy. Because it will make my job easier. And if you say you are eliminating your friends so that you can become president, yes, I'm eliminating based on their deeds. Based on their deeds. It's okay. It is allowed. It is like when you have to run and somebody now with my drugs. Would you allow to compete with that person? No. This is the situation. Bad with my drugs, I mean, I bad with my drugs, I mean, I change. If I would push a fast, if I put it on my t-shirts, when I'm on t-shirts, but I pay a pair of them, she never want. They are far because of the money that they have acquired. I don't want that. They want to bring that to at the same level. I'm leveling the playing field. This is basically what I'm doing. So, and you know, Others who come up to say, no, it's political, whatever, whatever. No, it's because of Bill 10. I mean, come on. Me, Bill 10, I am happy with it. Because Bill 10 gives me an opportunity to petition my HH. If I can find him 
due to one of these with the article 52 i will manage not to, i will manage to, to 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 put an injunction against him and i intend to do it until all these issues are cleared mr hh will not stand i will not allow mr hh to stand i will make sure i put an injunction until all these matters are cleared so the better these cases uh, the earlier they are cleared the better because I am going to put an injunction as long as these cases are still lingering, I will petition, if these cases are not concluded, I will petition to make sure that Mr. Aka Indeichima doesn't stand. Vasangwa, he can also go in, go in with eligibility. And at the end of the day, we shall see how we will, we will, we will, we will, we will fall out. I think I've made my point for now. Like I have said, it's not only this which I have, I have a few others that I'm looking at. But for now, I wanted to give you this. And just one case of this. One case of this. Ngaya Peter. Nishpa Fita. Any questions? Ngata Mufile. We push it. We push it. We push it. Number one. Yes. yes. Of the two analyses. Do they bear the same name, same date of birth, and the like? They bear. They, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, to talk too much on that because remember NRCs are private. <laughs> you, you, you see what I mean? All I'm saying is that there are two NRCs. I won't go further than that because I don't want to, uh, you know, to, to be answering other unnecessary questions that may delay me. Hey, guys, wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's wait, let's wait. Let's wait for the questions. Uh, I'll, I will post this video on social media. You will see them. Yes, so I want to answer the question so that we have to know. Uh, we couldn't ask a child one. Yes, sir, Mr. Tayel. Yes. I'm Tamari. I'm yes. going to phone why. My question is uh, you, you, you've taken an approach and a very uh, active approach in terms of uh, fighting for, for corruption, as you have said it. Uh, but you are dealing with issues that happened uh, years ago. Uh -huh. uh, my question is, yes. Let's do we, are we seeing you taking the very energetic approach in uh, dealing with the issues of uh, recent corruption, such as the 42 fire tenders, the ambulances, and the recent one, the COVID-19 funds, which have been uh, misappropriated? Are you, are you going to approach these issues of corruption with the same vigor? That you are. My brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters in the media, I will take an opportunity to make an appeal to you through that person that sometimes we are the ones that propel stories that have no have no depth. Sometimes we are the ones that that run with these stories, but they have no depth at all. They have no depth at all. For example, there is that. Uh, interlocutory judgment that came out and the, the media were covering it to say and now Nawabi has been ordered to pay an interlocutory judgment busy writing Nawabi has been ordered to pay now the issues that you have spoken about you have spoken about the 42 power, power uh, uh, whatever uh, 42 uh, 42 power, if by, by engines you have spoken about the, the ambulances uh, we can even add 42 houses, 48 houses, we can even add those. And one by one we can talk about them. The 42, 42, uh, 42 fire tenders, what evidence do we have? What evidence do we have that Chilpatayari can run with a near QCC? What evidence do I have? What? Where am I going to start from? Tell me. Yes, the price is high. Yes, the price is high, but when you go and peruse through the tenders, I mean, even those that he competed with these, they are not willing to come forward. What do you do with it? What do you do with it? Because as, as I, I, I've been on that case, by the way, we even went to NRC, N, uh, to, to the Anti-Corruption Commission, myself, before the story came out. The Anti-Corruption Commission themselves, they came out to say, no, the tender process was followed. What do I do? What do I do? Then you talk about the, 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 the ambulances. On the ambulances, as far as I'm concerned, I went through that, that, that story as well. 
You talk about 288 per unit. It was not 288 per unit. And if you go down to, to do a breakdown on what was bought, I didn't see even the inflation. But because somebody put it there, 248, 48, and everybody was talking about, you know, each unit costed 288. It never costed 288. Each unit, I think, was costing about 135. And if you turn the market, it's like a normal price. What do I do with that? 48 houses. 48 houses. The owner is there. This case is in court. This case is in court as we speak. The owner is there to say, these are my houses. And I built them through the money that was sent from, I don't know that guy, who is actually, I think, a Malawan. He even came in the country. He even came in the country to, uh, you know, to push for his houses. The lawyer that he was using was the uh, of the government. I even went and saw Obdekawe myself. Just that I don't know now Obdekawe is late, but I know who is handling the case. But these are the facts. So what do I do with that? So even when you are accusing me to say, oh, you are not zealous when it comes to some of these matters, what is there to follow? And I appeal to you, the media, that please let us follow stories that are different. Some of these stories, they are baseless, they are nowhere. Next question. And the, the that the ministry of health. No. The COVID-19 uh, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Also in the report. I see you are, I see I see you are very anxious to send me to do this and that. I hope you can also uh, put in some resources. And, I, <laughs> <laughs> and you also must remember that you're also a journalist. Yeah. <laughs> everything on you, but I'm doing my bit. What are you doing? Anyway. Yes, uh, Mr. Dad, just a clarification. I know you mentioned that uh, it's not about Bill 10, but the general feeling from the opposition is that uh, with the form of Bill 10, yes. which the opposition are claiming that the PF wanted to use to that but advantage, yes. now that it didn't go through, the general feeling from the opposition is that uh, now they are trying to use you yes. uh, to derail uh, uh, to derail HH. Are you being funded by the PF? Anyway, no. Oh, uh, first, are you being funded? Absolutely not. Now, person actually, sir. I mean, uh, what I, I was struggling around, but I have my details. But anyway, it should be obtained. It should be obtained. It is a political, political uh, poor strategy on the part of UPA. Bill 10 is not going to help. The fall of Bill 10 has not helped the UPND. For example, they were saying, no, the fall of Bill 10, uh, citizens were celebrating. Did you see citizens celebrating in the streets? It was only Haka in the with his lawyers who were celebrating Nama Angry Lion, na four kids. <laughs> That's all. They were celebrating Ama, uh, Hungry Lion and Four Cousins. <laughs> Only them. I never saw anyone outside, outside celebrating. So that issue of saying Bill 10 has put UPND in, a, uh, in an advantaged position, I mean, it's, it's not here nor there. There is nothing, even if a PF Navena, they are just, uh, I don't know. Bill 10 has no consequence because a lot why it has no consequence. A lot of people did not even understand Bill 10. Eh? I saw one of uh, these celebrities, you know, who wants to become a politician. She was asked about Bill 10 and she's aspiring. She was just all over the place. And I know even among us here, I don't think there are a lot of us who can articulate what Bill 10 was all about. So Bill 10 really has very little consequence in terms of politics. I wouldn't even be bothered about Bill 10. I wouldn't even be bothered because it's only him and a few of his uh, MPs. And by the way, not all his MPs agreed with him. And that's why he locked them up. If I had confidence in his MPs that his MPs did not agree with Bill 10, he would have allowed them to go to Parliament. Why did he lock them up? He put them in under the bunker. 
毎週やっとこの方はこうそういうのを見てる。<笑><笑>誰か。So, if they can fund me, and at the end of the day, I also clobber them, why not? Yeah, um, <laughs> let, let President Michael s a t a r have taken this c h a n n e l to court yes. in the case of uh, Michael Trophia s a t a r v i s a in the chamber. Yes. And the, the presiding judge then, Honor b o m a t i v i n i to find the mischief mm. or a scam. As an undesirable element which must be removed immediately when it is noticed. And to allow it to grow and it yes. takes long, it becomes difficult to remove it and it yes. becomes chronical, yes. it affects everybody. Yes. Now, the issue we are having here mm. is like a, a scam or a mischief which should have been removed a long time ago. Now, based on that advertisement, the court said those who had the information in their hand sat on their rights to deal with this particular p a r The question is, what? What is the interest to bring now when this particular thing has even expired because they happened in Zambia? Where those who are bring the evidence now had this particular knowledge and they were within themselves. Okay, in, I can summarize your question to say why are we bringing these issues now?、Eh, things which happened a long time, why are we bringing them now? And why were people sitting on the information? Yes, fine, you, you, can, you can extend it like that. But for me, I would say it is the work of God. It was waiting for you. <laughs> it was waiting for me to come so that I can sort out all these guys and become president. You refused the funding from the PF. Yes. For the sake of transparency, you were about to fly. Yes. Outside the country for investigation. Yes. And there are a lot of movements that are concerned. Yes. For the sake of transparency which you are preaching,、yes. who is funding? I am running a business right here.、Uh, oh, just at my、uh, demon. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm running a business right here. I'm running a consultant. s Demian, bring a business card. We can share among these people. Give them. <laughs> Give them a business card. I'm running a business and I do consultancy. And in my consultancy, especially at this point in time, I'm helping a lot of people to collect their debts. And some people, you know, like one client I know, is being owed 1.2. If、uh, that money is paid 1.2, I get 7% commission. How much is that? Because some of you think I'm sharing that money. I make money easily. Easily. I've just a clarification on the house. Yes. Yes. You said the, the cost was 9.8 no, million. Yeah, 19.8 million, yes. 19.8 million. Is that the old currency or is it? Rebased. The old currency, yes. And then it was not rebased. Non rebased, yeah. Sorry, non rebased. Chisum. It was bought by HH and it's 1,000. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
when, uh, when, when, when was that? Uh, I think that was um, 19 what? Uh, you check in the printout, the date is there. Oh, yeah. um, my question is on file number 1954. Yes. You sent it uh, in 7 days, I purchased it in, in uh, 2004, right? Yes. But uh, I remember it was dated in 1997, 1998. Yes. 1997, we are not going through trial. You <laughs> ask us <laughs> the <laughs> Ask the next Yes. So, don't you think, uh, after the Lima Bank was liquidated, that house would have changed hands from Lima Bank to another place from the Mr. Kendrick and Lima would have purchased the other place? That is a very nice thought. Please. Join the defense of Mr. Haka in the each <laughs> We will answer in court. I'm just asking. No, no, I'm telling you that that is a nice thought. I have all the evidence, I have all the explanation, but of course, I mean, I don't have to start giving this one by one. So many people seem to have been you know, affected by Mr. Haka in his privatization in Denver. But why are they not come forward? Why does it have to be you to you know, come forward and get the help? Why? Why, uh, where do you think I'm getting this information if they are not coming forward? So they are coming forward through you. Can somebody say they are coming forward through you? They are coming forward, yes, because I'm a public lawyer, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think we are. That, well, okay, let me take one last move. That's just I've just started by the kitchen. Have you spoken to Mr. J and Mr. Siakutambo? And the other question is, during the presidency, you had a visit with Mr. H.H. A lot of people described it as you were kind of scared of him and you don't want to call him the president. Listen, there are a lot of people talk about that encounter with Mr. Hitchin. When I went to Mr. Hitchin, Mike Smith, by the way, who stood up where I was sitting to go where I was sitting. And when I reached him there, I said, Mr. President, may I have an opportunity to greet you? And he stood up to say, are you genuinely greeting me? We didn't even finish the greeting. The man launched into emotional attacks on me. Why do you write about me? Did you want me also to start shouting on top of my voice? Where I come from, we respect the elders. I just respected him. I couldn't also start shouting back at him. It is not to, to fear him. Have you spoken to Mr. Jerry and Mr. Sertambo? How come that's I have that's evidence here if I have not spoken to them? <laughs> Sorry? Just summarize, I have a problem. I have a problem? With my transmission. So, 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 I'm strongly confident that this is a case that should be prosecuted and I'm going to court. I will go through the Anti-Corruption Commission, through the police, and at the option time, I want to face Mr. Haka in the in court over these issues. I mean business. Thank you very much. <laughs>